What is going on here? He inquired. Ask your mother who has been trying to kill me, Ada said at the top of her voice. What is she talking about, Mama? Obina asked his mother. In a small and lively African village lived a boy named Obina. He was the only child of his mother, Onoma, a widow. Onoma loved her son more than life itself. Though she was only in her mid-thirties, years of toil and hardship had etched harsh lines into her face. She did everything in her power to provide for Obina. Working long hours in the fields, taking on odd jobs, and even foregoing her own meals to ensure he never went hungry. She was exhausted and constantly struggled, but she found encouragement in her son's presence and the hope that he would have a brighter future. Nothing is too much for my son, she often said to herself. I don't want him to suffer like me. I want a better life for him. One morning, as the cock crowed in the early hours of the day, Onoma and her son rose and began their morning routine. They fetched water from the stream together, cleaned the house, and while Obina prepared for school, his mother made him pap for breakfast. Obina got dressed quickly, gulped down his pap, then picked his bag and darted towards the door, shouting, Bye-bye, Mama. But his mother quickly called out, Obina, come back here. He smiled, walking back to stand in front of her. I don't know where you are always rushing to, eh, my boy, she said. Close your eyes. Then she proceeded to say prayers over him, as she usually did. May God protect you this day and open your mind to understand all that the teacher teaches. You will respect your teacher and be a shining example to everyone. Bad people and bad things will be far away from you. You will grow to be a great and successful young man. They both uttered Amen. Then Obina remembered something urgent. Mama, don't forget my math and English textbooks. Mr. Chike said that's where all our homework will be from tomorrow. Oh, I haven't forgotten, my boy. I will make sure I get it for you. Obina gave his mother a big hug and darted towards the door. Onoma left alone, slumped back into her chair, riddled with worry. Despite all her efforts that week, she hadn't made enough money to feed them boots and afford the textbooks. She wanted to fall to the floor and cry, but there was no time for that now. As her mind raced, thinking of a solution, she got an idea to use the little money she had to buy pears from the farm and sell them beside the junction on the way to the market. When the school day ended, Obina hurried back home, eager to see his mother. As he approached the door, he noticed the door was slightly open and the house was unusually quiet. Mama, Mama, he called out, but there was no answer. He decided to wait, but as the day got darker, his heart sank with worry. Where could she be? he murmured to himself glancing around the dimly lit room. Then Obina decided to take things into his own hands. He went back outside and looked around the village, hoping to spot his mother and praying that nothing bad had happened to her. As he walked around the village, the sky darkened and it began to drizzle. But he did not relent setting off toward the village market as quickly as he could. As he neared the market, he saw people scampering to seek shelter from the rain. Obina's eyes eagerly scanned the area, and finally he saw his mother under the rain, holding a thin polythene bag over her head and a basket of pears set before her. 
she was soaked to the bone her thin dress clinging to her body but she remained steadfast determined to sell every last peer obina's heart ached at the sight he rushed over his voice catching in his throat mama what are you doing out here in the rain Onoma looked up surprised and a little bit embarrassed but with relief washing over her obina you are back i i needed to sell these pears to pay for your textbooks obina took the basket from her hands tears welling up in his eyes mama you shouldn't have to do this you have done so much already onoma placed a comforting hand on his cheek I'll do whatever it takes for you, my son. I want you to have a better future. Obina was lost for words. He recognized his mother's love and the sacrifice. And he knew the importance of him getting his textbooks. Yet, seeing what his mother was going through made him deeply sad. He hugged her tightly. Mama, I promise you, one day I will make enough money so you never have to suffer like this again. You will have a beautiful house filled with beautiful things. You will never have to worry about anything, he said. Unoma's eyes glistened with pride and love. You are such a precious boy. You make all the sacrifices worth it. The day had darkened and they began to make their way home in the quiet night. Thank you, Mama, Obina uttered, for everything. Onoma smiled and replied, thank you too for giving me hope and strength. Years passed and Obina grew into a handsome and ambitious young man. His hard work paid off when he landed his first big job, a momentous occasion that filled Unoma with pride and relief. However, along with this newfound success, Obina brought home news that filled his mother's heart with both joy and fear. He had fallen in love and wanted to marry. Onoma was overwhelmed by the shock of the announcement, but quickly recollected herself. Don't you think this is too soon? And who is this girl that I have never heard about or seen, eh, Obina? She asked. She is a very nice lady, Mama. She is a wonderful person, kind and beautiful too, Obina continued, trying to convince his mother. Onoma looked into her son's eyes, seeing the earnestness and how much he had fallen in love. She knew she had to try for his sake. All right, Obina, she said reluctantly. I give my blessings. They both embraced and the celebration continued. But Unoma couldn't shake off her worries. She had heard too many stories from neighbors and relatives about sons who after marriage drifted away from their mothers. The thought of being alone, especially in her old age, terrified her. In time, Obina got married to Ada and they lived very close to his mother. The first few months were great and Onoma almost forgot about all the worries she previously had. Until one day, Obina came to tell her something urgent. We are moving to Ogidi, he said. Ada says it's a great place to start a business and we will be moving next week. The urgency of the announcement instantly resurrected all the fears Unoma previously had. But Ogidi is far, and I won't be able to see you often, especially as you now walk. And I won't always be able to walk all the way to Ogidi. I'm not as strong as I used to be. I know, Mama, Obina said. I promise we will find a way to make it work. I'm running late for work. We'll talk about it later. Something about the hasty plans did not sit well with Onoma 
and flung her into a state of worry. As she made her way to the market that day, the issue remained on her mind. Just then, at her favorite vendor store, she noticed a group of women gathered nearby engaged in animated conversation. Curious, she slowed her pace to catch snippets of their discussion. Did you hear about Amaka's son? One woman said, her voice filled with disdain. He got married and now his mother doesn't even see him anymore. The wife keeps him all to herself. Another woman chimed in, Oh, that's nothing. My cousin's son married a girl who turned him against his own mother. She doesn't even allow him to send money home. Onoma's heart sank as she listened. The women's voices grew louder, each one eager to share more horror stories about mother-in-laws and daughter-in-laws. It's always the same with these young girls, an older woman said, shaking her head. They marry our sons and then they try to push us out. They want to be the only ones in their husband's life. Onoma felt a knot tighten in her stomach. She tried to focus on her shopping, but the conversation continued to echo in her mind. Do you know what's worse? Another woman added. When the mother-in-law tries to intervene, the son sides with his wife. It's like they forget who raised them, who sacrificed everything for them. Onoma clenched her jaw, the words stinging her deeply. Everything seemed identical to what was happening between her and her son. So this is what Ada is planning, she thought. To separate me from my son and keep him all to herself to control. I'll show her that I wasn't born yesterday, Unoma said silently to herself. Later that day, Unoma asked Obina if she could move with them to Ogidi as she would be lonely with no one to care for her. It broke Obina to see his mother sad and pleading, so he accepted. But as soon as he got home and told his wife, she was furious that Obina had taken such a decision without discussing it with her. The next day, Ada went to her family home and discussed her predicament with her mother, sisters and aunts. Can you imagine what Obina did? Ada blotted out as they shelled granots in the living room. Everyone paused and turned their attention to what she was about to say. He accepted to let his mother move in with us, without even informing me. Ha! You have to be careful, though. That is not a good sign, one of her aunties responded. I've heard so many stories about mother-in-laws being wicked and difficult, Ada's younger sister, Ifoma, chimed in. You have to be careful, Ada. They can be very possessive of their sons. Yes, of course, another of her aunties added. That was how my mother-in-law wanted to be with me. But I showed her, I showed her from the onset that she can't mess with me. Until this day, she is still scared of me. What you allow in the beginning is what will persist. Ada, if you allow them, they will control your home and turn you into a maid and a slave, her aunt contributed. I even heard that some mother-in-laws are actually witches sent to frustrate homes because they don't want their sons to get married and leave them. Ada's younger sister added again. The conversation continued filled with many horrible stories about mother-in-laws in their village. Ada listened with amazement, fearing that her marriage was about to become one of the statistics. Ada's mother who had been listening made her contribution. Obina's mother has been through a lot. She raised Obina on her own and he is her only child. It's natural for her to feel protective, but you need to establish boundaries early on. Make it clear that you are now a part of Obina's life 
and that you deserve respect. You have to be patient and understanding. Show her respect but don't let her walk all over you. Remember that her fears are rooted in her love for her son. If you show her that you care for Obina as much as she does, you might find a way to her heart. Her mother's words were the only encouraging words she received that evening. But she couldn't shake off all the horrible tales she had heard from her aunts and sisters. She was determined not to let Obina's mother ruin her happy home. She was going to stand her ground no matter the cost. Onoma moved in with her son and his wife, but they never agreed on anything, not even for a single day. Ada was not happy with Onoma in her home, and she made it clear by her actions. But Onoma was unfazed because she was happy that she had followed her daughter-in-law's plan to separate her from her son. One morning, Onoma woke up early and made breakfast for the home. As soon as Ada got up and noticed, she hissed and went into the kitchen, beginning to prepare a separate breakfast for herself. Ada, didn't you see that I have made breakfast for us already? Why are you still cooking? Onoma asked. But Ada ignored her and continued peeling her yam. So it has gotten to this, eh? That you don't even respond to me anymore. Tell me one good reason why I should. It's not enough that you have come to control my house. Now you are on the mission to poison me. Your plans will not work. Tell whoever sent you that ten of you are not enough to undo me. Ada said combatively. Ah, you ungrateful and mannerless girl. Unoma responded bitterly. And you are a conniving old witch, Ada replied. You that does not even wake up to clean the house? What type of wife does that? Norma said. Yes, and I never will, Ada answered. I am not your maid. If you want anything done, do it yourself as it should be. Which? Ada clapped back. The heated exchange woke up Obina, who had barely had some sleep. He came in just in time before they started throwing objects at each other. What is going on here? he inquired. Ask your mother who has been trying to kill me, Ada said at the top of her voice. What is she talking about, Mama? Obina asked his mother. You see what I was telling you about marrying this girl, Obina? She is trying everything possible to separate you from me, the mother said angrily. You have been poisoning me and I can prove it. All the neighbors have seen me throw up each time I eat your food. This had gone on for months. Every day, Obina had to try to settle quarrels between the two most important people in his life. And no matter how hard he tried, he could never please them. Things only got worse with each passing day. The situation had taken a toll on him, physically and mentally. He had many sleepless nights and couldn't eat properly. Even at work, he couldn't concentrate. The only time he felt a little relief was whenever he wasn't home. But when it was time to return, he felt sad. He loved them both, but he felt like the situation was making him lose his mind. None of them seemed to notice how sad and unkept he had become. He apologized to both of them and pleaded with them to get along. That night, Obina lay wide awake, feeling as if he was losing his mind under the weight of his home situation. He had exhausted every tactic to unite his mother and his wife, and now there was nothing he could do. He couldn't continue like this, he thought. There was only one thing left to do, and he made the decision to do it. He stood up, taking one last look around the home he had always known. Then he walked to his mother's room, standing at the door for a moment, 
watching her sleep, he felt a pang of guilt and sorrow. He then moved back to the room he shared with his wife and the same emotions washed over him as he gazed at her. He knew this was the hardest decision he had ever made. He packed a bag full of his belongings and with a heavy heart, Obina turned and walked out of his house. The sound of his footsteps echoed in the silent village. At the first light of dawn, Ada woke up and turned to greet her husband, but found his part of the bed empty. That's strange, she thought. She went around the house, but still couldn't find him. Returning to their room, she nervously noticed that most of her husband's belongings, along with his big bag, were gone. Panic set in. What's going on? What happened, she thought. If he was traveling, he would have told me. Besides, the things he took are too much for just a trip. Her mind raced in several directions. Her heart beat faster than ever and a cold sweat trailed down her back. Suddenly, something flashed through her mind that made her red with anger. Angrily, she barged into her mother-in-law's room and began to accuse her. Where is my husband? she demanded. What evil plans have you put in his head this time? Since you couldn't kill me, you've decided to separate us, eh? Onoma shook her head in disbelief. But as Ada continued to rant, worry set in. Onoma stood up and looked around the house, but her son was nowhere to be found. She only found the scant remnants of his belongings. Ada still ranting had now begun to sob in between accusations. Onoma stood in confusion, trying to make sense of what was happening. Her eyes glanced around the room until they met a piece of paper crumpled under a bowl on the dining table. It read, Mama and Ada, it pains me to write this, but I am going away for a while. I don't know where and I don't know for how long. I am afraid I might not last much longer if I don't do this. I am losing my mind in the place that should bring me peace and for everyone's sake, this is the best I can do. Obina. Unoma began to wail. You have killed my son. You have taken away all I have in this world. You have sent him away with your trouble, Ada. Ada angrily lashed out. It is you who have ruined our home. Everything was perfectly fine before you insisted on coming to take over. The blink continued all through the morning until they each decided to go looking for him separately, visiting all the places he could be. At his place of work, they learned he had taken leave the day before and none of their relatives or friends had heard from him. They searched for days, days turned into weeks, and there was no trace of him. It was as if he had vanished into thin air. Ada and Unoma began to worry that something bad had happened to him. Their home became like a graveyard, silent and gloomy, as each person began to question how their attitudes had led to this. They secretly wished that they had another opportunity to try their best to live in peace and harmony. Their searching continued daily. Their routine was to begin searching at daybreak and continue all through the day until nightfall. One day, Onoma noticed that Ada had not gotten up that morning to search. She must have given up on finding Obina. Why wouldn't she when she didn't give birth to him herself? After all, she could just remarry, Unoma thought angrily. In a fit of anger, she walked straight into Ada's room, only to find her tossing and turning uneasily on the floor, holding her stomach and looking very weak and lifeless. Ada! She called out with urgency. 
In between feeling sick and holding a grudge with her mother-in-law, Ada had no desire to respond. Instead, she weakly turned away like a leaf moved by a light gust of wind. Unoma came closer, touched her forehead and neck with the back of her palm, and asked, Since when have you not been feeling well? It comes and goes, Ada replied. I'll be fine. But Unoma took a closer look at Ada and asked her a few unrelated questions, then shook her head from side to side. You remember when you said I poisoned you? You were right. There is indeed something in your stomach, but I am not the person to blame. Unoma said. Ada looked at her bewildered. Congratulations, Ada. You are pregnant, Unoma finally said. Ada looked at her, shocked and excited. But the smile quickly disappeared when she remembered that she could not share the news with her husband. Do you think he is okay? She asked her mother-in-law gently. Unoma sat beside her and heaved a sigh. I pray every day that he is protected and that he comes back to us. What do we do now? Ada asked, looking lost. My dear, we must intensify our efforts. If not for anything, then for the sake of this child. We need to put our heads together and give this our best shot. Onoma gave Ada some herbs which made her feel better. And for the first time that day, they headed out together in search of Obina. They searched frantically without much progress. But this time, the search was easier because they had each other's support. By evening, they reached the stream where Obina and his mother used to fetch water from when he was a child and sat on a large rock. Onoma stared at the flowing water, her thoughts drifting back to the countless times she had come here with Obina when he was a child. This place held many memories, both happy and bittersweet. She sighed deeply, breaking the silence. I never allowed him to come to this stream alone, Unoma said. I was afraid of losing him. After his father died, he was all I had and my only encouragement to keep on living. That day had been emotional. Every place they visited had a story tied to Unoma and Obina's past. From the markets where Unoma had peddled petty items, to the houses of friends and relatives where he had stayed while his mother did odd jobs. Even the places she went to beg for medicine when Obina fell ill. Ada was finally able to see through Unoma's eyes. She was deeply touched by Unoma's struggles, devotion and sacrifice to make Obina the man he was today. She felt saddened by the fact that Obina was indeed all Unoma had and she prayed once more that they would find him. This time, not just because of her and the child she was carrying, but also because of Unoma. Don't worry, Mama. We'll find him soon, Ada said as they walked back home. Yes, Ada. By God's grace, we will, Unoma replied. With each step, the distance between them lessened, replaced by growing mutual respect and understanding. They realized that despite their differences, they both wanted the same thing, the happiness and well-being of Obina. The next morning, Onoma was woken by a heavy and inviting aroma coming from the kitchen and the rustle of furniture. She went into the living room and found Ada cleaning and arranging the house. Ada, you are not supposed to be doing this in your condition. Please hand me the broom, she said. But Ada refused. I feel strong today, Mama. I can do it. Onoma picked up another broom and joined her 
and together they cleaned the house, then settled down for breakfast. Ada had made Unoma's favorite food to cheer her up. Wow, my favorite! God bless you, Unoma said with a smile plastered across her face. Though their heart still ached, they were happy to share such a beautiful moment. Unoma smiled, not just because of the food, but because she suddenly understood what people meant when they said, men end up marrying women who are just like their mothers. Ada was very much like her, stubborn but in a good way, but also hardworking, warm, very thoughtful and even left-handed just like her. A few more weeks went by and there was still no sign of Obina. But Ada and Unoma had grown very fond of each other. Unoma cared for her through her pregnancy as if she were her own little child, so much that Ada felt spoilt. They had both grown to love and appreciate each other, encouraging each other through such difficult and uncertain times. One evening, Unoma and Ada were saying their evening prayers together in the living room as they said Amen in conclusion, and Ada opened her eyes. She shouted in horror, Ghost! Unoma turned to see what Ada was referring to and also shouted, It's not a ghost, it's me, Obina said. He had walked in while they were praying but they were so deep in concentration that they didn't even notice. They approached him carefully at first, then they all embraced and broke into tears. Tears of joy, regret and sadness all mixed in one. Obina had stayed with one of his friends in a nearby village so he could keep an eye on his family and ensure they were okay. But when he found out that Ada was pregnant, he suddenly gained the strength to return home. He knew the challenges his mother faced as a single mother and the challenges he faced without a father. He didn't want that cycle to repeat, so he came back immediately. I'm sorry for walking out on you boots like that, he said. I promise to never do that again. Thank you for coming back, Ada said. We were worried sick. Then Ada turned to Unoma and said, I'm sorry for judging you hastily and being harsh to you. Unoma apologized too. I'm sorry for invading your home. I was afraid you wanted to push me out of my son's life, but I never knew the kind of loving person you are. It is obvious I trained Obina well because he made an excellent choice by marrying you. As Obina watched, his shame turned into gratitude. From that moment, they had a peaceful and harmonious family. Ada and Unoma visited each other frequently and the whole village talked about them, not in a negative light, but as examples of what a mother-in-law and daughter-in-law relationship could be. Obina's family situation is a prime example that not all daughter-in-law and mother-in-laws are inherently evil. Sometimes it stems from natural fears we have as humans and what our society and environment has projected on us. This can lead to a lot of misunderstandings that only worsen over time. But like in all good relationships, if we are patient enough to see things from the other person's perspective, or spend a moment in their shoes or even get to know them better, we can understand them and have beautiful and unexpected relationships. I hope you enjoyed this story. What do you think about how Obina handled his home situation? Was there a better way he could have gone about it or was he just a weak man? I would like to read your thoughts in the comments. Welcome if you are new here. Please join the Oat family by subscribing to the channel and turning on notifications. There is so much I'm excited to share with you in the coming days and weeks. Don't forget to like and share with anyone who needs this. Remember, no matter how different we may be, 
our stories unite us. Thank you for watching. I'm Flora and see you on the next story worth sharing.